What's up everyone, this is Rob, and today we are checking out the Edelkrone Stand Plus. I got an email just over a week ago from Edelkrone about a new product that looked to be possibly a tripod replacement. And so when I clicked in further, I saw that this was a friction-based tripod that can get overhead shots as well as just regular tripod style shots. Um, and that, that intrigued me uh, because uh, when I operate in my video business, uh, one thing I hate, especially if I'm doing a lot of interviews that's like some more run and gun um, or just anything that's fast paced is changing uh, my tripod height. Um, so I was curious, could this tool replace a tripod? So I got my hands on one. I paid for it with my own money. Um, they didn't send me this. They don't know I'm making this video, but stay tuned for a very in-depth look at the Edelkrone Stand Plus. At first look, the Edelkrone Stand Plus looks like a gimmick. When you go on to Edelkrone's website, you can tell that it is marketed toward the YouTuber and content creator that is typically by themselves working at home. And I was curious as a professional videographer, is this something that I could use in my arsenal? Will it replace a tripod or will I be sending it back? The Edelkrone Stand Plus has a max load capacity of 5.5 pounds. It has a minimum height of 22 inches and a maximum height of 60.6 inches. It weighs in at 9.9 .9 pounds, though when I put it on my scale, it weighed in at almost 12 pounds, and it does not come with a carrying case. Now the Stand Plus comes in at $490. Uh, that might seem like a lot of money for a big hunk of metal, but depending on who you are and where you are on your journey, that can either be very expensive or rather cheap. Uh, if you are just starting out, $490 can be quite the investment. Most people are spending that on a whole plethora of things for when they're starting out and not just one item. But if you're a professional, sometimes you're spending upwards of three to 5,000 plus just for a tripod with a fluid head. So uh, depending on who you are, take that with a grain of salt. Moving forward, you know, what do you get for that $490? Well, for me, Edelkrone is a more premium brand. I like to look at them similar to, to Apple. Um, Apple, you know, they're all about simplicity, um, clean lines, minimalistic, and uh, that's no different than Edelkrone. When, when the box arrived, it arrived like my previous slider did, where everything was just nice and neat. Uh, there was no extra packaging, no extra manuals. It, it was all just, you You open a box and, and there it is presented well. There's a QR code you can scan, which will uh, navigate you to a online video that shows you how to use it properly. And you only get one single, uh, or two I should say, um, uh, keys to adjust it, Allen keys. And so, uh, I, I was very skeptical um, when I first took it out. I noticed that there, you know, it, there was a bit of weight to it, and I guess there has to be, you know, when it's supporting, you know, a camera that's overhead looking down. If it's telescoping out, there has to be at least a decent amount of weight so that the camera doesn't fall forward. Um, you know, if you compare this to other tripods, some that are cheaper can extend outward to point down to shoot like an overhead tabletop. Um, they, they can be like the Manfrotto B free, which is like three or, four, three or 400 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then to have a quick vertical rise or fall um, for getting different, uh, you know, heights for your shots, you either have to untwist a tripod leg and each column raise, lower it, hope that they're all around the same height. Then you go with your fluid head to adjust and, and level that. They do have a Sackler, uh, you know, and if Manfredo might have one, but it's, you know, a quick, you know, set system where you only have to undo one latch on each leg, and then it will allow you to sort of raise and lower it all together without having to do each individual column. And while those are very helpful for, you know, cinema cameras and, and, and shooting on the fly, they're also very expensive. I bought the Sackler Flowtech 75 with the uh, FSB8, I think that's what it is, uh, fluid head a, a year or so ago, and that was almost $3,000. Albeit that is a fluid head that can support a good amount of weight, it's a very nice tripod. Um, and I'm not comparing this to that, but 
it does sort of compare to the sticks because for me, the benefit of the Edelkrone Stand Plus system is that it can raise and lower um, very quickly. And so uh, jumping into how it performs uh, and how easy it is to use, um, I went ahead and set it up in my living room and dining room. And after the first or second try, I realized, okay, you know, this is the way it is actually watching the video and grabbing it where they say they, they you know, you should grab it and putting your foot and knee uh, where they say you should on it to help um, in using the friction system. Um, don't just like go in thinking that you're smarter than it or else you're, you'll just uh, kind of get frustrated because it's not as easy as it really is once you once you do it properly. I liked it for the most part. Um, you can adjust each friction point with an Allen key. So if you have a heavier setup, you can crank it down to make it a bit more uh, you know, stiff and less likely to want to move under that weight. Or if you're using a lighter setup, obviously either out of the box or just dial it back a pinch. You obviously want to test this out before um, you just like let your camera just freely sit there. So that way you don't think it's supported and then it's slowly drifting and then falling and crashing down. I found it very easy to deploy. Um, and once I knew where to grab it and to move it, I found it easy to move around. Uh, one thing to note is that this will not replace a fluid head tripod for any sorts of tilts or pans. Um, this is a very, uh, you know, sp specialized or niche, I should say, um, you know, stabilization tool meant for, you know, getting locked off shots, whether uh, that's, you know, just tripod like or overhead. Um, while shooting the B roll for this, I realized how often I was changing the height of my tripod and how much of a chore it was because I had to grab the top of the tripod, lift it up so that there wasn't any weight on the legs, adjust each leg individually, which was actually kind of hard, um, you know, because, you know, the ones next to you are easy, but then the one that's further away is a little bit hard and you, you can rotate it in your hand, but you have the weight of the tripod, tripod plus the weight of the camera there. And it just like, it was just tired, you know, tiring. And, and every time that you get it to the height, level it out and you're like, oh, it needs to be like two inches taller. And then you do the whole same process over again. That gets very tiring. Um, and I know that people that do might do like commercials uh, or like features. Number one, they probably never buy this, but they have all day, you know, to, to do, get the shot. And so like they, they probably don't care about this. They probably have a team that's helping them, you know, hey, you know, let's let's raise that. Let's let's lower this. But if you're working by yourself, um, that's where this I I was more shocked to think that, you know, it, I would like it. But I was just like, oh, man, if I if I just had that I would just raise or lower it. Like it'd be super, super fast. And so the more B roll that I shot of me doing this, the more I realized how much it sucks using, you know, a normal tripod for these types of shots. Going into a tripod versus the stand plus, uh, we need to consider a few things. Um, we need to consider the footprint. So one thing I did was I did measure the 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 width of a normal tripod legs um, when it is the same height as the Stand Plus can go. And so, you know, are you saving any space? It's meaning that you can work in smaller spaces um, because you are using the Stand Plus? Or are you having a larger footprint than needed? It's it's one of those things where I feel like I just wanted to to know you know what am I giving up one way or the other? And so if we if we look at the tripod versus the stand plus when the legs are extended at the same height, what you'll notice is that the stand plus has two longer legs and then a shorter leg um, that's in the middle. And so you will have a different distance because unlike a tripod, they're not all equal. And so what I found was the shorter leg 
in front saves you about 11 and a half inches, so almost a foot of clearance. Um, you know, you can obviously shrink a tripod's legs, but for stability, I like to at least set it to um, the the minimum width where the tripod kind of locks and doesn't allow you to open the legs any further. That's to me the most comfortable. And so you're you're saving 11 and a half on the sides, and then. Um, on the, the widest part, you're saving three and a half inches um, on either side. So that's a seven inch savings from the longest sides and then almost a foot from the other side. That's, that's a good shrinking of a footprint if you are constantly working in the, you know, maybe four to six foot range of, of height um, for, you know, shooting content. Uh, and if you are, shooting with the tripod without the legs, you know, uh, extended at all, just open and just plop it on the ground. Um, you're actually losing space because the, no matter what you do with the, um, stand plus, it is always the same base level. And so, uh, if we measure the base level, which I did, uh, from the longest point to the longest point, it's right at 38 inches wide. And then if we were to go from the middle section, so that measurement is 24 inches. I just feel like it's important to have these measurements because those are, those are, you know, things that I, I think about when I'm working in smaller spaces. And, and another thing is that a traditional tripod because the legs extend out from the top making you know a, a cone shape um, if there were other obstacles objects in the room that were in the way your tripod is get, now getting in your way whereas if there's other obstacles but the base of the stand plus can fit underneath them because it has such a small it, it's a skinny little pedestal so you actually can shoot in tighter spaces if you have that floor clearance, even if there's chairs or desks or anything there because you are not, you don't have that cone shape uh, to compete with. When comparing the Stand Plus to my other tripods, it is definitely uh, noticeably a little bit heavier uh, depending on what kind of tripod you have. Um, so my tripods were weighing in around the eight pound uh, mark the stand plus is just shy of 11 pounds. So, I mean, it, it is adding a noticeable bit of weight depending on the tripods you have. It either takes up the a similar size footprint, a smaller footprint. Um, sometimes it's shorter, but it's just a little bit wider. Um, you know, so, so it's, I feel it's important to at least, you know, know the measurements to know that, hey, is this something that can fit in my my checked luggage or is this something that I'm just going to use around the house and do I have a place that I can easily tuck it away? That's the nice thing. It does fold up very compact uh, to, to store away. And so since it's aimed more at home, you know, YouTubers, content creators, I think I don't I feel like people aren't going to be traveling with it as much, but just something to note definitely feels premium. Uh, there's thoughtful features. So the handle, um, it moves freely. So that way, if you're walking with it, the, it can swing naturally versus it being stiff and rigid. And that would probably, you know, hurt your wrist. Uh, so, so that was a nice, uh, touch. It has the, you know, the frictionless design. So there's nothing to, to twist or turn. You're literally just like moving up and down, let it go. And it holds in place. That's really nice. They have steel ball wheels, kind of like ball bearings. I don't think they work that well. One thing I did notice with those steel wheels was that in my house, I have uh, dark wood floors. And when I was testing, you know, moving it around, there was a bit of grit, like maybe some sand from, from outside from, you know, it's, it's winter here. And as I was moving it, uh, a wheel might catch on just a little grit of sand or maybe it was a small like st stone or something, but it would scratch the, the hardwood where it sort of grabbed that. And it did that for a few different wheels. And I was making sure it wasn't already there. And, you know, as I moved it, I would see it just a little small speck, you know, of, of grit 
catch and then drag and then I saw the, the scratch being created. So obviously I didn't want to keep doing that, but it is something to note that, you know, depending on what type of floors you have and where you're shooting, I personally felt more comfortable um, with my personal wood floors, um, just kind of lifting it and putting it into place versus sliding it around. If you're on carpet, you obviously don't have to worry, but that, that brings me into my next uh, test that I did, which was, you know, people had made comments when this thing was released. They're like, hey, look, look, it, it kind of it, it wobbles. You know, I would never use that. And so I tried it out on carpet and I also tried it out on a solid wood floor. In their material, it says that if you were using it on carpet, you will need to possibly secure it because the way that it is designed, because carpet is, it's not completely hard, it actually like allows a little bit of movement. And so I did notice that I, I hit the camera and on hard surfaces, almost, you know, within a, a second or so, it, it completely stopped on carpet. It just kept kind of wavering just a bit and just, you know, those micro movements and shakes are obviously going to be very uh, jarring. Like, you know, it's, it's not something that anybody wants in their footage. So if you're, we're going to be using this on carpet, it's just, it, it's one of those things, you know, like, is it going to move? I don't know. Everybody's carpet's different. Everybody's house is different. Um, so just be, be wary that they themselves say that if you aren't using this on a solid surface, you will want to stabilize it. And it's hard because like, you can't really stabilize just the base because there's so many friction points that, that, that can move. So unlike a light stand, you know, you can't just bag it and be done. So I feel like if you have a studio or a home with hard floors, you're good. I thought it stabilized just fine and it only moved with me hitting it. It didn't just like randomly start moving throughout, you know, my tests. So that's, that's something to consider. So I guess I gotta take a coffee break. I have a uh, four, 16 week old son, wait, four, eight, 12, 16. Yeah, 16 week old son. That's why I, I haven't shaved. I'm using natural light. Um, I'm drinking lots of, lots of these. It's been awesome, but it's also been, been a bit tiring and uh, probably why I haven't put out much content because between raising a kid and creating content for, you know, my clients, it's just, it's been a, it's been a, been a good bit of uh, a bit of a struggle. Um, the, the baby Henry started daycare this week. So it's given me more time to sort of get back into the swing of things. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching, even though I look like a homeless Native American. Let's talk about deploying the Stand Plus. It was crazy fast. So for me, you know, all you do is you slide out the bottom segment to, to lock it and to be, create that stable base. Then you just pull up and get it into the position that you want. It is already level. It is made of solid steel, so it doesn't feel like it's going to like bend and then become off level at any point. So I, I trust Edelkron's build quality. They've always done really well. Um, and putting it away is, is just as easy and just as fast. And so I feel like if you're constantly frustrated when making content that like getting into the right position to get the shot is just like either taking you out of creating content because you're just like, oh my gosh, this is tiring. This is taking too long. Um, I feel like this could be a really good tool for you um, because typically if you're creating content um, by yourself, or of yourself, you're, you're you're not panning and you're not tilting. So like, that's really not necessary. Um, and I feel like maybe getting four shots from different perspectives, different places, different angles in the same amount of time that it takes you to get one shot because of how you have to move and adjust your tripod. Um, I feel like that would be a stronger video than having a pan or a tilt. So, you know, it, it just depends on what kind of, you know, creator you are. Everything is just kind of, you think about it and then you can do it almost instantaneously. Whereas with a, with a tripod, 
you can think about the shot and then to execute, even though it's, it's not really that much time in some people's busy lives, you know, it can, it can be the difference between it's simple enough. I'm going to, I'm going to create that content or it's just a little too much for me to do right now. And I'm going to put that off and then people put it off, put it off, put it off. So, you know, think about who you are in, in that realm and then see if, if this would maybe solve that problem for you and get you creating more, even though you might think that it's limiting because like, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't pan, it doesn't tilt, right? It, it might actually make you more creative. And it's surprising when you limit yourself on what you have, that you actually become more creative. You know, if you have six different lenses to choose from, it's analysis paralysis, you know, you're, you have too many options. And so you don't end up choosing. Whereas if you have one thing to choose from, you just, you're forced into making that one thing work and, and getting creative on how to accomplish that. And so, um, and this might go on, off on a quick tangent, but you know, I went from two C300 Mark threes, a C500 Mark two down to two C70s because I was just like, like, I don't, this, all this big stuff and it requires, you know, bigger tripods. It requires all this other stuff. And I was like, man, it's, it's, it's heavy. It's cumbersome to carry around, you know, the bigger the camera, the bigger support. And then to carry all that gear, I needed a bigger vehicle. Let me go to C seventies. And then even C seventies, while amazing cameras were, were still like, just, they felt too big. And then I went to, I'm shooting on the FX three and I have an a seven four and everything got smaller. And now I can fit most stuff in a backpack. And for me to throw a backpack on and just go somewhere and, and shoot, I'm much more apt to do that than having a uh, Ford Transit Connect, which I had, which had a full grip kit, you know, the, the whole nine yards. And it's just like, one's a hassle and one is doable which side of the fence do you live on? And if, if, if you're a DP and you're getting hired by production companies, I mean, you gotta have, have all that stuff. I, I get it. But if you're creating your own content, if you, if you're doing work for your own clients, they are not asking you what you're shooting on. They're not asking you what you're editing with or what monitor that you're using to do it. They don't care about any of it. They, they only care about the end result. So, the one, the one random lesson I'll give you from this video is that sometimes less is more. One thing to be aware of with the Stand Plus for the overhead shots is it's gonna be better if you are working with a table that uh, the front sort of support leg can get under. I tried setting it up in my kitchen um, that didn't have, you know, that that area that it could slide under. And while I was still able to get it overhead, it was it was not able to get as far over the counter as, you know, I would probably want it to if I was shooting an overhead because they warn you about this um, in, in their instructional video. If you extend the the uh, friction arms too far forward, the weight will just pull it down and your camera camera can crash to the to the floor. So that's something to be very cognizant of is do I have enough, you know, back angle on the stand plus so that when I push it forward, that it's able to like have enough of that back weight to where it's not going to fall forward. And so I then redid the test at my dining room table. So obviously there's nothing to block the, the front support, um, under the table because it's, it's just hollow and I was able to get many different um, depths onto that table without feeling like that camera was going to fall in any way, shape or form. So, you know, if you're going to use this, maybe you have a cooking channel, um, maybe you do art, look at where you're currently working and doing these overheads and make sure that like at least there's a little, you know, I don't, I think maybe a kick plate, a little area that your, your feet can go under. Um, it's even better if, if there's nothing there, anything that just allows the entire base to come just 
that much closer uh, to where you wanna be. And it really depends on the size uh, and weight of what you're putting up there because you know the heavier the load, the, the more it's gonna pull, the earlier. And so if you're running a really light setup, you may be able to extend it further because there's not enough weight um, to pull past those friction points. And like I said, you can use an Allen key to adjust it. However, you know, it, it then can become a little bit more cumbersome to, to move into different uh, positions just because all the friction points are that much tighter. Throughout these tests, I was using a Sony a7 IV with the Sony 85 1.8 lens. You know, it's probably maybe like close to two pounds. They say that you can rock just over five pounds on this unit safely. And because like I didn't have a setup that was currently built to be at that weight, what I did was I took a, a fluid head um, that I that I had from like one of my first tripods, and I actually used a uh, a thread adapter so that I can actually screw it onto the Stand Plus, and and because that weight was like 5.1 pounds, right? So it actually was was right around what they think the maximum is, and so it supported it just fine. I did notice that whenever I went to go do some overheads, that I would need to tighten down the friction points more so that it wouldn't, you know, completely fall over, but it, it supported it no problem. And what was interesting to me was I was like, okay, can I take a stand plus and turn it into a fluid head solution that's also able to do overheads? And I don't think so. <laughs> um, one thing I noticed was because of the friction points and because it allows it to, um, you know, move freely. If I was trying to do a pan or a tilt, there's just that little bit of play that I wouldn't want to use it for any pans or tilts, right? Because you're going to get just some of that micro movement in there. Um, I tried to support it, right? I tried to put a little bit more pressure, put my foot on the base. Um, but because you're dealing with friction points, right? Like there's just too many nuanced movements that can happen as you're, as you're panning or tilting. Um, so while I thought I might've, you know, figured out something that they didn't think would be able to happen, it just, it wasn't the case. And so you cannot use a fluid head in the traditional way that you normally would. You can leave it on there and use it to turn the camera, right? So like I said, the footprint is wider on the sides and then it's skinnier in the front. So maybe if instead of turning the entire unit, if you have a light enough camera and a light enough head, you can put the head on, put the camera on, and instead of, so you don't turn the whole thing, you just turn the head, right? That could be very useful. Then you can tilt down from the head because the head only tilts, right? one way it's not able to move around so turning it to the side and then being able to tilt up or down and then leave it leaving it there locked off could be useful one last idea that i had while i had that fluid head on was okay so the minimum height is is 20 you know inches can we make it lower and the answer is yes and so what we did was we just took the arm that the uh, that the head attaches to and just laid it all the way to the ground. Now, typically, if you just had your camera connected just to the built-in plate on the Stand Plus, you don't get that level angle just because of how it's made. So your camera would be pointing into the ground and you know there would be no point of doing that. But because now we have a fluid head, or if you had any sort of you know adjustable head, doesn't have to be a fluid head, um, you can slam it all to the ground then just adjust the head to make the camera level. And now you have a working height for this stand plus from around three inches all the way up to 60, 63 inches with the head. So it makes the stand plus much more versatile. Just remember you have to have a camera lens combo that is light enough to also then add a the weight of a head onto the stand plus to stay under the 5.5 uh, max load capacity. The last test I did was I wanted to see, because I was about to show you the weight of the camera with the uh, fluid head, just to show how much weight that the uh, Stand Plus was supporting. I was like, oh, I need a, a higher angle you know, shot that's looking down. How long would it take 
if I had to use a tripod, you know, it's a, a standard tripod, you know, so you open up all the columns and you, you get them all out and then you, you level the head and then you can put, you know, put your camera on tilted down and it was, it was, it was a chore because now that I've like played with the stand plus a few times, I literally just, you know, pulled out the bottom, lifted up the base. And then all you got to do is screw that quarter 20 into the bottom of your camera and, and you're done. And it, it was so, so easy. And so for me, that's why I said like, I can get more B roll. It might not be, you know, have movement to it, but I can get a lot more B roll than using a tripod. It, it's, it's it just, it, that's what blew my mind. And so I think that I'm going to be keeping it because I was, I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to like this. You know, a tripod does everything plus more. Right. And, and it, it made my life easier. And, uh, and I know that, you know, they, they make other tripods that, that are more quick setup. Um, but you're paying a lot of money. You know, this thing is 490 bucks. Those quick set sticks can be, you know, over a thousand dollars. And that doesn't even include the, the, the head. So, you know, I think that this definitely has its place. Who is this for? I think it's, it's for people that do um, fast moving uh, at home work, YouTubers. Uh, if you are a professional and you like, I do corporate, right? So for me, if I'm working at, at, at businesses all the time, they typically have hardwoods, level surfaces. I can take this and get lots of different shots throughout the office really quickly. Um, those are more industrial floors typically, so I don't mind if if maybe a piece of, you know, of whatever scratches as I'm moving with that ball bearing. Um, and so I feel like it's, it's actually really good for corporate. And if you are somebody that typically shoots outside, shoots where the ground is not level, this isn't for you. So um, I think I'm going to add it to my arsenal. I'm going to, you know, let one of the other tripods sit out and, uh, you know, I'll report back and on how that went, if it was a smart move or not. But I know this was uh, one of the longer videos, but I, I really just wanted to hopefully provide, you know, as much value and insight um, from a working professional. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments below. And also, if there's anything that you want to know or want to see uh, going forward, please let me know because, you know, I've been doing video for almost like 17 years. Uh, I've been in sports broadcast for almost a decade, and then I've had my own company since 2018. So I, I've been around the block. Uh, you know, I've gone through gas gear acquisition, you know, syndrome. And I've spent my money on a lot of stupid stuff that I just didn't need. And I was, you know, I was thinking that this was going to be one of those things. But like I said, after after further review, it turns out that this might actually make my life a lot easier and and uh, be a helpful tool in my tool belt. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.